collection. Actually, a brief history real quick. Off-White started off as Pyrex, and no, not that Pyrex. <laughs> Though they come up to equal value. When Virgil Deadass put a barcode over a wholesale flannel, branded it, and sold it for the same price as an Xbox 360. Except you can't even play Halo 3 on the flannel, like what? And then after a while, the cartridge became Off-White, and you know, da 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 Virgil's gone, best thing ever, Off-White Easter collection confirmed. And now the priests are no longer called Father. Daddy. Okay, so now the design. I'm not a fashion designer by any means. My biggest credential was that back in the day I made my own Call of Duty logos. You know, you can one v one for for me any fucking day. But come on, man. It's a sidewalk. On the bright side, you'll never get ticketed for jaywalking because... Officer, there's a sidewalk on my back. It really becomes a point where it's like, are you really buying it because you like it or are you buying it because other people know it's hype? I can't even tell if it's minimal or loud. Like, is it black or white? Like, where does this lie in fashion? It's like an off-white or something. But it's definitely a design that everyone knows, and when you see it, you know it's off-white, which makes it attractive to people who are just trying to flex all the time. And that means you're not buying clothes for style, you're buying it for attention. And uh, here's that attention you ordered with a side of fries for, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. High? Mr. High PVs? Mr. High PVs? Like, if you see this walking around, like, I'm just gonna try to add you on Snapchat, bro. And wh wh what's the deal with this? What is this? Is everything just sarcastic now? Like, is Virgil just joking the whole time? For watching. Like, oh, thanks for letting me know. I was gonna rollerblade in it. This whole thing is just... You can put the quotations on anything. Actually, never mind. The quotations are genius. Next up, we got price, and... I don't have the cheapest taste, but are you really getting your money's worth on this? Like, I made a mock-up, and here's a side-by-side -side with my design. It's like... I don't even know that sucks. Jesus Christ. Look at this guy. $120. And it's only 16 gigabytes. What the hell? This better have been made from the foundation of the hospital that Virgil was born in to be worth $120. <laughs> you can buy like <laughs> bottles of water from the movie theater with that money. Not much to really say on price as it kind of just speaks for itself. Like I know the FBI dude in my webcam about to break his silence and go, Really, Christian? You're gonna spend $300 on a shirt? And you know it's a bad thing when the FBI guy doesn't want me buying that, but he's cool with me buying me. <laughs> Lastly, we got people, and by this, I mean the people that really just buy it to flex it. The people that don't really style it, but rather just wear it because it's all white. You suck, guys. No, not, not, not you suck, guys. No, like, you suck, comma, not. You, you know what I mean. But Off-White says it's defining the gray area between black and white as Off-White. You gotta ask yourself, is there a deeper meaning? Think about it. Black and white, as in evil and good and then like evil black as in like hell and good white as in like like heaven so heaven and hell black and white off whites in the middle does that make off white the earth because the earth's between heaven and hell and now who made off white again virgil pablo figuratively speaking virgil created the earth and who else was known to create the earth well <laughs> God! Virgil Abloh is God! Alright, so to wrap this up, I'll play some Mason Ray and Phoenix with Correct Me for Okay, so thanks for watching the video, guys, and hopefully now you know to say no to the road sign rodeo. Comment down below the funniest respect women comment you can think of, and next video I will shout out my top three that gets funny. So be creative and make me laugh, but still respect women. Follow my Instagram at ChristianDY, tweet at me at ChristianDYYT for some quality behind the scenes. Email me at foodwarsetic at gmail.com for anything. And yeah, guys, stay lit. Respect women, but uh, most importantly, you're wearing Air Max today. You're yeah. wearing the Air Max 270. I've seen you wearing the shoe a lot on social media. You like the shoe quite a bit. I really like it. I like. I have to say, I. those sneaker shopping videos on complex pretty sure i know my shit anyways i'm gonna break this video down into three things and they're gonna be design trends and collabs and i promise i'm putting my hand on a bible i'm not some emily over chill i just fucking uh for design i know it's a very subjective topic but i feel like this is definitely more creative and fresh as compared to this uh, i mean come on guys when was the last time homeboy walked in with these and like
really quiet as shit if you got these on. They're like the in and out. That's the first. But we're not here to talk shit about Adidas. I have to talk about their video. They have their highlights as well, though. But to continue, I feel like the designers this year are killing it. Besides me jumping the fuck out of the red. I mean, come on. Where'd he jump? I guess the concept is cool, but... Why are we just doing this type of stuff? There we go. I'm pretty sure Buzz Lightyear can jump farther than Michael Jordan. Again, I have no credentials in sneaker design, but the new Air Maxes and even reimagined versions of classics are really pushing the standard for 2018. It's refreshing seeing totally new silhouettes and creatively remodeled versions of already great sneakers on the first team. I'm trying to see basically the same shoe on everyone. Oh my god. Like, again, nothing wrong with it. They're comfy and functional and you can do whatever you want in them. But nobody's watching the same poor movie every day. Unless it's like a classic like Forrest Gump or like the Emoji movie. Next up we got trends and Nike is really hitting it on the dot with the creative direction this year. You see the fits getting the most likes on Instagram. Actually, never mind. That's not that credible of a story. You see the fits getting the most upvotes on Reddit. What do they have in common? Techwear is going to be a big influence for streetwear in 2018 and Nike is really riding the wave on this. By the way, I called it and phone was pretty by the way. You're missing out on some quality stuff. But anyways, you got things like the 10 collab with Virgil, ACG, the new Air Maxes, and so on. Very techwear inspired designing and on par with what's hot. But for sure, don't copy things one for one. But if you like something, don't be afraid to pull inspo. But Nike's really moving the trends forward with actual fresh content rather than... You can follow the next Tinker Hatfield on Instagram. Christian Look at this, I'm a certified airport. Last but probably best, we got collab. Most obvious, we got the 10 with Off-White, really boosting Nike's cloud, but I'm not gonna talk about that because who cares, it's too fucking expensive. But there are many more alongside it with the Kendrick Cortez, the new CDG Air Maxes. It's a good way to express yourself through fashion. And isn't that the main point of dressing anyways? Cue the fucking music. An example is like if Kendrick's music really touches you. Those Cortezes are a great way of expressing that. Emily Oberg works out in those new Air Maxes, and you just like Emily Oberg, then why would you want to fuck it up? If your girl asks you if you love her, and you tell her only partly, and that you only love your bed and your mother, and that you apologize, then get those OVOs, fam! What I'm saying is that <laughs> collabs and influencers under Nike give you another way to express your interest, even if it's just through shoes. And that, bro, boys and girls, is one of the best reasons to cop. Alright, so to wrap this up, Nike respects women. That's all it should be. Okay, so thanks for watching the video, guys, and I know I have a video up as to why Nike sucks, but come on, it's 2018. I'm a changed man. Follow my Instagram at ChristianDY and tweet at me at ChristianDYYT for some quality behind the scenes. Email me at FugalAesthetic at gmail.com for anything with yeah, guys, stay lit, respect women, but most importantly, What the hell? It's so hot. Like, are seasons supposed to change? The last Supreme Cup wasn't even that much heat. Like, yo, excuse me, dog. Like, uh, yo, what's the temperature right now? Wait. You like Abercrombie? Yo, your opinion don't matter, bro. What the hell? What am I gonna do with this one piece that I spent all my money on and now I can't wear it because it's too damn hot? See, if you weren't such a damn high beast, you wouldn't have this problem. So watch the video if you're trying to live a good life. What's up guys, so we try to look good and respect women year round and that's not happening when we spend our entire self net worth on random shit like this. Like dude, just, just do this. <laughs> but really as satisfying as flexing on middle schoolers on the internet is, what are you gonna do when you gotta do laundry you got nothing to wear. How are you gonna hide your insecurities now? Anyways, in this video, you're gonna learn how to properly manage your wardrobe and make it flexible all year round. Flexible. Flexible. Oh, I found my new thing. I'll break it down into three things and they're gonna be tops, bottoms, and shoes. So let's go, boys. Tops are probably the most 
flexible part of your wardrobe. But for the most part, it's always necessary to have plain colors. Different cuts and fits can totally change the vibe of just a plain black t-shirt. Some outfits call for a more chill, oversized look, and some call for a well-fitted piece. So you can see how just a plain t-shirt can make up a whole lot of fits, and best thing is, you don't even have to sacrifice your whole paycheck and tribute to monsters to buy it. Plain hoodies as well, when it's chilly, don't want your nipples showing. Newsflash! Hoodies don't actually have to look like toothpaste and or resemble nature's aquatic apex predator to look good. You know? Just some food for thought. Plain gilded hoodies even are good enough. A <laughs> lot of versatility. And you can wear them year-round. I'd even say to people that aren't middle schoolers, a plain hoodie with a nice color is probably just as stylish as something branded. Sure, you get a good flex, but at the end of the day, whose opinion do you care more about? This? Or this. Ah, wrong answer, bro. The only opinion that really matters is yours. And your crush, of course. Next up, we got pants. And there's really not much to say here. There's not really much room to flex here anyways. So don't bother wasting your time and energy thinking of how you can make your legs look IG worthy. Only time you should be flexing your legs is in the gym. So I really like slim pants. Basically the only thing that I wear, if I'm being honest. So I'm probably a little biased to say the least. But for valid reason, I'd say they go with everything and you never really look bad in them. So I don't see the problem. If it's not broken, don't fix it. But I am a big fan of this straight fit movement going on right now. Wider trousers are also a good look, and you don't even have to cash out on these either. Regular straight fit pants from Levi's, H&M, etc. are perfectly fine for adding flavor to your wardrobe. Magnus wears it well, so if you're trying to find inspo, he's probably your best bet. But, if you want to see the same pair of pants in every picture, go follow my Instagram, at ChristianDY. I don't care, bro, I like them, okay? Fight me. It'll add distressing. Lastly is shoes. I'd say you can flex shoes if you want, as it's subtle and... Since, you know, they're on the ground. My eyes are up here, fellas. But white sneakers are the king of wardrobe essentials. They look good clean and beat, so they work you around. I'm team white bands personally, but any white sneaker will do because they're just white shoes. All right, so wrap this one up. Flexible wardrobes are the fucking move. Okay, so thanks for watching the video, guys, and hopefully now you're suited to respect women in all circumstances, whether it be rain or shine. We gotta look fine. The Respect Women merch is coming out May 5th. So mark your calendars, people. It's only gonna be up for 10 days. So make sure you got a little something saved up because you've been waiting this long. It's your chance to cop. And I'm only doing this once. But more importantly, I'll be donating 15% of all profits to breast cancer research because we actually respect women, guys. For a good cause. You can go follow my Instagram at ChristianDY and tweet at me at ChristianDYYT. Email me at frugalaesthetic at gmail.com for anything. Yeah, guys, stay lit, respect women for real, and most importantly, we can't fix this experiment, but we can fix this underbite. We are my favorite spot. Oh, fuck. Target. What Sherry Broke was in this video, you're gonna learn a properly styled dollar menu street where not everyone can afford this shit. I'm just chilling with my McNuggets. <laughs> I'm gonna break it down into three things, and they're gonna be thrift stores and uh, random shit. So yeah, also big fucking news, I'm producing a new concept live series on the channel, so if you want to stay tuned to the end of the video to learn more about that, that would be great. Thanks. But yeah, you don't need to ball the fuck out some basic stuff, that's not what you do. <laughs> know what the difference between this and this is? The fucking letters. Also, one's like fucking ten times more and you don't need to be doing that. It's like porn. <laughs> Why would you pay for something when you don't need to? You know, premium or not, good nut. It's a good nut. Target is a great spot that I always vouch for. You know, when I was broke, I was like, fuck. Back in high school, I used to shop at Target all the fucking time because they honestly have a decent clothing department for both men and women. You can definitely look stylish in some basic stuff. You don't have to buy the most expensive pair of pants. Like, dude, I even wear the same pair of pants every damn day, and they can be from anywhere. You know that. These could be from Old Navy, for all you know. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You know, they're, co they're completely fine. I'm just saying. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>
The main thing I'm trying to get at is if it's low roll less and it looks good for the low, I don't see the problem at all. Like, sure, the quality might be there, but you don't see anyone complaining about a fucking chicken. You ever hear anyone say, oh, the quality of my chicken sucks. That's why I don't eat it. <laughs> ever gets this one obviously exactly cheap streetwear no one complains about the fucking with chicken no one's gonna cuff you with some cheap black pants next up we got thrift stores thrifting was pretty thick fat back in like 2013 2016 era it's kind of faded off the mainstream but you definitely should not disclose it for the offense today i still thrift every now and then but you know i'm probably gonna pick it back up again because writing this script now i realize why the fuck not it's fun and you know it's cheap you know i guess you have to help oh also fucking Thrift dates too, I'm telling you, works a hundred percent of the time. Here's a satisfied customer, not a fucking actor. Yeah, for those aesthetics, I'm not a thrift date, and I'm a hundred percent satisfied. That, that, that's it. Yeah, I'll just edit it so it looks real. Thrifting is definitely a gamble, but 2018 is about doubling down and taking risks, so take your shot at your local thrift. You don't even have to be into vintage stuff strictly. There are all kinds of stuff you can find in there. This is a piece I lucked out on at a local thrift, and it's probably one of my favorite things ever. We have some good spots of like Goodwill Savers, and even just Googling some thrift stores in your area will get you some unique spots to your location. Just give it a sample. It's fucking cherry, I promise. Lastly, we got random shit, and I know y'all are wondering what the fuck this topic even means. I'm just sometimes you can find random shit in random places that are low-key good, like the fucking... Air airport, bro. My flight got delayed one day, and like I went to buy a bottle of water from a Hudson's, but instead I got this oversized embossed sweater for twenty two dollars. Can't find much for twenty two dollars in twenty eighteen. It's fucking expensive. The word millennial just sounds fucking premium. Like you gotta pay monthly for this title. And you know, it's just it's a solid sweater. It was soft as hell. I cuddled with it on the plane. Main point is sometimes places that you don't expect to buy clothes from have random merch or designs that you might end up liking for the low. Even like college athletic clothing. Just buy a size up and you got some vintage looking tees for like $20. Not everything in your closet has to come from the mall. It's a thick online shopping website. Definitely have fun finding new shit that no one else has and make it your own. Like old ass hats from random spots. Or like your dad's closet. Or both. I don't fucking know. You never know, man. If you <laughs> don't look like everyone else, don't shop where everyone else shops. Alright, so to wrap this up. Okay, so thanks for watching the video, guys. And thick fucking news. I'm producing and writing a new show on the channel based around taking people shopping for an event or something that they got going on in their life. It's going to be a fun way to showcase how to style and shop for outfits for various situations. And it's another angle for me to create content and keep things fresh. Definitely going to be collabing with a lot of people for this. So, you know, put your favorite YouTubers down below so I can reach out and make some shit happen. Don't worry, though, I'll still be uploading videos on this format, but it will definitely be mixed in depending on how this new series interacts with my new lifestyle. For more updates on this coming soon, so let me know what you think on my socials. My Instagram is ChristianBY as usual, and if you want to reach me, I'm pretty active on Twitter now at ChristianBYYT. Email me at frugalaesthetic at gmail.com for anything. And yeah, guys, looking forward to this next chapter for this channel. Stay cherry, respect women, but most importantly, Starting on, we got H&M with zipper pants and co. And up next, we got Forever 21 with the Pinterest on shirts, getting all the white girls rowdy. And up next, we got the crowd favorite, Usain, I mean, Zara with the Walmart high fashion. Let's get started. Set, pop, and Zara's off to a bad start, and H&M takes the lead with the zipper pants. But Zara with the fake Balenciaga is bursting through, and he wins the whole Zara thing. is now officially the fastest fast fashion brand and now they suck. What's up guys, so in this video we're gonna go fast and talk about why fast fashion sucks. I'm gonna break it down into three things and they're gonna be creativity, as in the absence of, quality, as in lack of, and people. But real quick before we talk more shit, the Respect Women merch is still live and you have seven more days to cop before I take it off forever. It's Mother's Day if you're watching on Upload Day, and it's the perfect way to respect all the moms out here, so I'm having a Mother's Day special code only on Mother's Day. Type Google Aesthetic 10 on checkout, and you'll save 10% off your order for all you broke boys, and I'll save you a couple bucks. And you know, moms are the ultimate women, so go cop yours now before you regret it. The link is in the description. So first off, we got creativity, and like I said, there is no creativity. Most of the products on these fast fashion stores shelves are just less thick copies of trendy pieces. And as you can tell from these shoes from Zara and the original design from Balenciaga, 
is basically just a Walmart version of the original. But though you can argue it's a good alternative to something you can't afford, don't be out here flexing your Teen Titans Go version of the 750s like they're the real thing, because Teen Titans Go sucks. And on top of the redesign thing, some people out here actually stealing designs from people. Like, that's just... That's just mean. No, but really, just because you're bigger than someone doesn't mean you can just rip it. Isn't the whole point of a design team to... I don't know, this is just a long shot. But design? Pretty sure this is what Forever 21's boardroom looks like. Oh, wait, actually, there we fucking go. Don't get me wrong, though, there's some actual original content coming out, like these quality pieces right here. You know, look at this, see? I don't know why they're <laughs> doing their own shit. I mean, it seems to be working out really good for them. Uh, but yeah, so as many memes as I want to make on this topic, you can only milk a trend so much until it's out of style, because before you know it, Zara's making copies of it. Got him. Next up, we got quality as in none. But not only are they sacrificing creative integrity, they're also sacrificing reputation. And when you sacrifice reputation, you sacrifice clout. And when you have no clout, there's no point, so you're basically dead. And now you're dead because of Forever 21's rendition of Off White. Off Black by Virgin Apple. But since you're paying less for something, obviously you gotta compensate somewhere. But don't expect a bunch of wares for something you bought from Top Man or Zara. I mean, like, sure, it's great for trying something out, but building your closet with pieces from these stores is like trying to get a ripped body using a shape weight all day. As in, you can try. Definitely send me the video. But you're bound to look stupid. So chill out with these shape weight closets. Lastly, we got people, and the previous two subjects were lacking, but for this one, there's just too many people wearing the same shit. Like, all of this stuff is mass-produced, so don't expect to feel a sense of individuality when you're rocking something from H&M. Sure, it may look cool and different, but then you walk into McDonald's, and you see some dude wearing the same shirt as you, and he's eating a 20-piece nugget. Now you're twins, but he's the better one, because <laughs> he has the chicken nuggets. Also, the amount of times you'll see the same outfit on Instagram will drown it out for everyone anyways, and it will quickly get bumped out of style. Which is why it's called fast fashion. As in, it's fast to gain hype, and fast to get phased out. Alright, so to wrap this up... Okay, so thanks for watching this video, guys, and hopefully now you know to slow the fuck down. Respect Women merch is only up for one more week, so get it now before it's too late. Use code Google Aesthetic Pen, only available on Mother's Day. It'll save you a couple bucks. The link is down below. Also, for sizing issues, if you guys happen to order and you found the shirt to be a little smaller than expected, just shoot me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can, I promise. Definitely... So today I'm going to save you from dying. I'm getting into CDG play, and here's why. I'm going to break it down into three things, and they're going to be design, price, and stigma. And it's breakup season, so we're about to break some fucking hearts today. I'm not going to lie. But before we get into design, I want to point out the key word in the title, which is play. CDG is a big fashion house with chapters other than play, like CDG Black and Shirt. So we're not going to talk about those branches. We're just talking about the dude in your class that goes... You know, if the teacher doesn't show up after 15 minutes, we can technically leave. And then ask to borrow a pencil, dude. Fuck that guy. Anyways, for design, <laughs> you got your basic heart and eyes and your polka dots. Honestly, though, there's nothing you can't make in Snapchat, guys. Like, sure, brand matters a lot in fashion, but if everyone thinks they're special, nobody's special. The CDG coffers I thought were really cool, but then everyone started putting the heart on literally everything. And now I'll listen to Kanye's 808s and Heartbreaks, and now I'm fucking sad. It's all because of CDG art. All I'm saying is it's Supreme's thicker foreign cousin. Next up, we got Price. Uh, yeah. No? Yes, I know cashmere, whatever, but still. I for sure pay a lot of money for clothes that I like as much as the next guy, but there's gotta be a line somewhere. You know, we're gonna do a quick materials to product price margin right now. So the shirt? I don't know, like $15. The patch? Like, a dollar. Let's just be honest. That's $16. Shipping and fees and shit, like... We're gonna go with $7 if we're being boozy with like DHL or whatever. So $23. And the actual product? $173. That's a $150 profit margin. 
That's fucking jokes. You know what you can do with that money? Like, you can buy a pair of good trainers. Train. Become shredded as hell, start a fitness YouTube, go viral, <laughs> respect all these honeys, and start your own business, and become super successful and rich and whatnot, and live like a happy life or whatever. But instead, we're out here buying pricey heart t-shirts. Really though, be honest with yourself, is the money really worth the logo? You know, sure, striped tees make you look kind of thick, and you know we all out here trying to be a little thick. But really, are you doing it for yourself, or for the mild increase in Instagram likes from your usual? I'm saying there are other brands that cost less that can do the same for you. And on the topic of Instagram, go hit me up at Christian DY. You know, I got a new theme going on, so uh, I'll probably make a tutorial on my old one. Lastly, we got stigma. So this is the root of all evil. Fashion is subjective, so in turn, so is what's quote. Hot. Now, I get the idea of minimalism, but to throw on a polka dot shirt and pretend like you're all of a sudden some reincarnation of Raph Simmons. It's just annoying. Like, there's always that one guy who practiced pronouncing Comme des Garçons properly for like 15 minutes, and then all of a sudden he's now some condescending pickle Rick that's gonna question if you even know what the heart means. Because I sure as hell fucking don't. I thought it was a strawberry at first. Don't get me wrong, though. <laughs> CDG Play was a great bridge between streetwear and what European slash Japanese fashion could be. You know, it's a minimal and lighthearted take on it, but people that twist it the wrong way and where to flex their deep, unparalleled understanding of street culture, those are the guys that ruin it. You know, like I said, I really like the CDG Converse, but just because you spend a little extra on some sneaks, doesn't mean you fuck. All right, so wrap this up. CDG is a French and Japanese brand, making it hop up. So if CDG was a girl, she'd be hella bad. That's all I'm saying. Okay, so thanks for watching the video, guys. And uh, so hopefully now you don't turn into that guy that thinks he's cool for wearing polka dots. Comment your favorite brand so I can uh, talk shit about it later. Respect Women merch is coming next week. Finally, I don't know why it took so long. I'll be doing the reveal on my Instagram, so go follow it at ChristianVUI. And make sure you tweet at me too, at ChristianVUIYT. Email me at foodblastetic at gmail.com. And yeah, stay lit, respect women, but most importantly, Women make up 51% of the population and act as primary shoppers for 75% of households in the U.S. Despite this, sneaker companies are only just starting to recognize women as a unique market inside their sneaker community. You know what? They want more than just bright colored shoes. So what's taken so long for the culture to catch up to reality? And what have we done as a culture to slow down the process of bringing women into the conversation? 
answers to these questions affect all of us, men and women, and are reshaping the future of this industry. This is a conversation we all need to have. On this episode of From the Ground Up, we're going to examine how women have made spaces for themselves in the industry when the blueprint wasn't there, what the future for women in the industry looks like, and how all of us can be a part of it. Any further, I want to point something out. I am a man. That means I cannot speak to the experience of being a woman in the sneaker industry. But we at High Society have decided to use this existing platform, this existing show, with our already mostly male audience to have this conversation. Because if this community is going to open up wider for women, that's something we all need to be engaged with and we'll all benefit from. What's up, guys? I'm here with Gia, creative consultant and associate fashion director of Barney's New York, Jackie Kim. Thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for having us. So we are talking about female representation in sneakers. In the last year or so, a lot of larger brands, especially Nike and Jordan, have taken initiative to approach women and sneakers in a new way. Seems a little late to me. What do you guys think? It's natural for that market to kind of capitalize on a cultural movement that's happening. Women have been wearing sneakers for, you know, quite some time now, and I think it's finally getting the recognition that it needs from, like, the bigger brands to really push forward in terms of design and sizing to give female clients the same sneakers that they've always wanted in their own sizes. For me, I think it's a very American-specific conversation because Adidas and Reebok around the world have already been producing women's sizes. I think Nike is incredibly late to the game, but what's great is that they're making a change. And I think it's interesting it's happening now because women have always been the driving consumer market. Most stores that they go into, at least 60% are women shopping. I think right now why it's so relevant is because now women are buying sneakers. As before, they were buying sneakers, but more for like sportswear. But now it's like a very big trend to wear sneakers with, you know, your elevated luxury brands right. or not. Lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. So I know that you wear your size fits into men's sizing. Yes. But have either of you ever had the experience that you saw a pair of sneakers that was coming out and you really wanted them, but they weren't available in your size? Totally. Can you talk to me sort of like what that feels like as a consumer, especially somebody who cares about Shoes. Yeah. Um, I forgot what shoe it was. It was probably a, one of the Jordans, you know, a reissue of a Jordan that was coming out. Because I wear like a women's eight, I can technically kind of slide into a men's shoe. Right. But again, it's like, because you're not being spoken to as a woman, it's a little bit, oh, this is a boys club, like you can't join. And I think that attitude, that mentality was always very hurtful to their business. And I just wanted what was offered to the boys. I didn't want the shrink it and pink it version of whatever was coming out. So, you know, it kind of sucks, but now I think that Nike's making a change and I'm excited to see what's gonna come down the pipeline. Just even listening to Jackie refer to herself as a woman versus a boys club, I think that's a testament to the fact that our industry needs to change. I think that when men or women are designing sneakers, it should never be a gender specific thing. I mean, maybe that's a naive thing to say, but I think by, saying like me, woman, versus you, man. I think that it even further divides like what can happen in our industry. Like I don't really believe that these gender pronouns should be specific to sneaker design, in my opinion. Totally. Until fairly recently, the way brands spoke to women was to do what the industry refers to as shrink it and pink it, describing the process of taking an existing men's shoe and then making it smaller and pink as the offering for women. There are plenty of exceptions, but the vast majority of women's sneakers are pastel versions of men's shoes. Put aside the fact that this only caters to a very limited market, it also shows a shocking lack of creativity, and that is not sustainable. In fact, it hasn't sustained. Before the brands caught on that they should cater to today's most fashion-forward female consumers, creatives like Mini Swoosh took it upon themselves to fix the problem on their own time frame. Our sneakers editor, Chris Danforth, sat down with Minnie Swoosh to talk about how she's carved out a space for herself and created a new aesthetic for an underserved consumer. What's up, guys? This is Chris from High Snobiety. We're here in London today at Nike's On Air Workshops, and we're joined by Alex Hackett. You might know her better on Instagram as Minnie Swoosh, and she's really part of any discussion that you're having about 
customizing sneakers and DIY culture. So thanks for being here. My pleasure. So first of all, we're sitting in these really amazing chairs that I believe you made. Yeah. Tell us a bit about those. These are one of like the my favorite things that I've ever made. Uh, it's 25 pairs of Nike dry fit socks per chair. Uh, completely deconstructed. There's a seam down the middle, so it's only left swooshes and left dry fit socks on the left hand side and right on the right hand side. They were actually uh, originally made for the Melbourne on air uh kind of workshops uh over in australia cool and for people that are not so familiar with your brand alch you're making really cool diy custom deconstructed stuff i see you're wearing a bunch of it right now yeah tell us a bit about your whole philosophy with that brand yeah so we kind of focus on the whole concept of deconstruction and reconstruction so looking at a lot of fabrics materials and products that may have originally been thrown out or discarded and looking at how we can extend the lifespan of them uh, through apparel and accessory design. So there is an element of sustainability to what you're doing? Yeah, I think so. It's kind of just about looking at different materials and products in kind of a fresh new way and looking at how you can incorporate them into what you wear. So in a sense, is it kind of a gap in the market that you're seeing and trying to fill that gap with your own products? Yeah, it's definitely like sort of a gap that's being created. I look a lot at products that haven't sold well or perhaps were kind of left in the street. You know, I love to look at those sorts of products that have just been discarded and really extending the lifespan of those through making them into something that's kind of like a hype item or you know something that's relevant in streetwear culture. For years, uh, streetwear and sneaker culture has kind of been considered like a boys club, but this is definitely changing in recent years. Do you see a shift in the market in terms of what brands are offering as far as smaller sizes for girls or female targeted marketing campaigns or things of that nature? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I've seen like such a huge change just in the last few years. But I've always said, I think it starts with the brands themselves, you know, accessibility to product. So yeah, availability of, you know, models in all sizes, you know, going from like a really small women's size up to a larger men's size. And I think that like inclusiveness is what a lot of girls were kind of like asking for, you know, we just want to be part of the conversation. So in years to come, what are some other changes in the industry that you'd like to see in regards to female clients? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really great to have, you know, female-oriented campaigns and all of that sort of imagery and the product associated with that, but I think less of the segregation. Us as females, we want to be included in the same conversation. We don't necessarily need a whole other conversation by ourselves, you know, we just want to be all considered equal. I totally agree with that sentiment in the way that, yeah, female sneakerhead is kind of a way to classify what some, someone's doing, um, but, you know, everyone should be a same part We're of the same, the same conversation. Same. Yeah. For sure. Um, and also we've seen a lot of really, you know, important changes in terms of like um, influencers and partnerships with brands. Alayli May comes to mind, yourself also working with Nike. What are some of your favorite partnerships in recent times that you can talk about? I mean, I love the Alayli Mays. Like, I love them. I love that it wasn't, you know, a really feminine colorway, but it had like really soft touches. You know, it had the satin on that toe box, but then it had the coarseness of the corduroy. For me, it felt like it really represented me and kind of what I stand for really well. I've often said this, like I feel quite empowered when I wear that shoe, because you know, I know it was designed by a woman and, but it doesn't feel feminine. And I think that's the whole point that a lot of us are trying to get across. So yeah, other than yourself, who are some people in this space that you'd love to see have their own Nike collaboration? I mean, for me, I really love it when they collaborate with kind of smaller individuals. You know, they focus on sort of certain areas within a city and picking someone, you know, a smaller artist or someone who's really at the start of their career and give them the opportunity to do something because then you feel like a really strong connection to that because it may be someone down the road from you and it kind of grows a community around that. I think that's what's really great about London On Air is that they're selecting, you know, people from all different parts of London, you know, people that live and breathe London having these sorts of experiences where you get cut off from what it is that you want or you you see a culture that you feel has put placed you outside of it do you think that either for you personally or have you ever seen that that sort of curtails the potential interest in what you know a, a female consumer could do you know so many male sneakerheads that interest is ignited in preteen you know if a, if a girl comes to it, a younger girl, and then she learns pretty quick, oh, this is not, I'm not allowed to be a part of this, do you think that could change, like, the trajectory of their interests and therefore 
has removed an entire market? That's a really tough question for me because I grew up always loving sneakers. I, so I grew up in a super small town in Alaska and like what was really big there was basketball. So like basketball culture has always been a part of my life since I was five years old, I would say. It's hard to put myself outside of that and have that conversation because I can't give you an unbiased answer. Sure. I've always been in the sneaker culture and I really res have to say thanks to my basketball coach, I think. Like wearing my first Harachis, wearing my first pair of Hyper Dunks eventually graduating to a Jordan and they're realizing like I can't actually play in Jordans because they don't really support my ankles you know so it's yeah, like totally. that mentality of like always being within the culture it's hard to step outside of that but I mean my advice for like young women who want to be a part of the sneaker game is like don't let men stop you this is no longer a men's game it's a equal platform for both men and women to be a part of it trans women, men, people who don't even identify with gender pronouns, like sneakers I think is an accessible culture at this point. And it's no longer about like being in this club. And I think that's what's awesome about sneaker culture in general. Yeah. Growing up, there's a little bit more, at least it, how it was before, There's there were more barriers to entry yeah. with the sneaker game, of course, as a woman. And like you said, a lot of, you know, your initial interactions with sneakers come from your interactions with the sports. And again, it's like a whole, macro discussion on raising your children boy girl whether they're like doing ballet or doing basketball i think it's all kind of a bigger conversation in terms of what we choose to push our kids towards or what our kids end up moving towards if that makes sense yeah you're a product of your environment at the end of the day i think you gave some advice for women if they want to get into this what do you think is the responsibility of the brands at this point are they doing enough and what else do you want to see come from so really interesting, I was in Paris, you know, a week ago for Fashion Week and they had, and Nike actually did this unlaced yeah. kind of activation, which I thought was really cool. So basically the, they're introducing women sizing in like the high heat collaborations, like the off-white collaborations, they're gonna finally offer it in the women sizing. So just that stuff is such a great progress for them. And I think it will activate the other brands to kind of follow that in that initiative. But also I looked at all the shoes that they designed specifically for women, especially on the, the Jordan brand side. And I think they're cool. They're like elevated and they're not, like I said, shrink it and pink it versions of what they were. And I think there's like more of a history and an integrity behind it where they're looking at, you know, like a female foot or like the way that women's bodies are built. Maybe it's a little bit different than men's and kind of designing around that last instead of just doing something else. The history of women in sneakers is fascinating in and of itself, but if we're going to grapple with what it means to be more inclusive, we need to shift the way we see women in this industry. We cannot let our own limited perceptions hold us back from creating a better place for everyone, and we can't confront how we've limited the community unless we recognize it first. Megan Ann Wilson has worked in the industry for a decade and a half as a designer and a stylist working with every brand you can imagine, and just as many athletes and entertainers. And she's been collecting sneakers longer than most collectors you know. I'm hoping that you're starting to get the picture, that there's more to women's sneaker culture than just the old shrink it and pink it model, and the overall lack of dope product. You can cry, you're still gonna get them all on. What kind of information, Chuck? <laughs> So today's video is going to be on top trainer trends of 2008.
What's up, everybody? I'm Seth Fowler, and you guys have been asking for a long time what this 250,000 subscriber giveaway is going to be. I've got the answer for you. If you don't know what this is, or you haven't read the title of the video, this is the off-white Nike Presto, actually in a size 10, it was purchased from Kip, still DS, and uh, I'm really jealous of whoever wins this, because I still don't have a pair yet. If you guys weren't already aware, once I hit 250,000 subscribers, I'm going to be doing a giveaway for a pair of sneakers. Up until now, it was a mystery pair of sneakers. Now we all know it's a pair of off-white Prestos. Again, very jealous of whoever wins this. More details will be announced the closer that we get to 250,000 subscribers, so make sure you're subscribed down below. That's also one of the things that you have to do to enter is be subscribed, so it doesn't hurt to do that now to just get it out of the way. Also, there may be a few tidbits of information dropping on my Twitter and my Instagram, at RealSethFowler, so make sure to follow those as well. But just because this isn't going to be my personal pair of off-white Prestos doesn't mean that we can't review the shoe. No, I won't be doing any on-foot shots just to keep these guys DS for whoever wins it, but we'll still be doing some nice product shots and really talking about what's going on around the sneaker. I also have a pair of the OG Off-White Presto, so if you guys are worried about sizing information, don't worry, I got you covered. So without further ado, here it is, the Nike Off-White Presto in triple white. So jumping right into the sneaker itself, can you actually see that on the screen or is that completely blown out? <laughs> Let me turn down this lighting a little bit. Jumping right into the sneaker itself, most of the upper is covered in this true white, sort of very highly perforated mesh. It's got this almost like left in grandma's closet too long and eaten by moth sort of look. It's a very interesting look, which actually I don't hate. I think it looks great. Like I've said in all my other off-white reviews, I really love the sort of prototype look that Virgil gave the shoe. I think it gives it a very interesting and unique feel, and obviously I'm not the only one who thinks that way because these are some of the best-selling shoes on the market. This whole filled fabric or mesh is very flexible and is actually backed by another mesh so your foot isn't going to tear right through it. Around the tip of the toe, you've got this sort of seam ridge, which is very similar to what you find with a pair of sweatpants if you flip them inside out and looked at the seam. And that's literally what they did with this shoe. Usually when they sew a seam like this, they sew it the way that it's shown right here. But usually they flip the seam inside out so you don't actually see this ridge and you get that sort of clean edge. That's obviously not what they did here. Again, going for that unfinished look. As you continue up on the shoe, you find this foam pad that's sewn onto the top of the tongue, essentially making it the tongue, which I think is a really cool touch. The edges of the foam are exposed just like they are with a lot of the other Nike Off-White collection. And if you don't believe me that this foam pad is just sewn onto the regular Presto, check that out. There's the regular Presto tongue right there. You've even got the little Presto logo underneath. Sewn onto the top of the foam, you've got this glossy white nylon material. Running loosely across the top of the tongue, you've got your white laces, which of course, as you would expect, have shoelaces written on the end. You've also got your red stitching detail at the top of the tongue and then your offset Nike logo. This pair, like all the other pairs in the Off-White collection, comes with an Off-White zip tie. This time it's in red. Something that I've never ever done before is wear the zip tie on the shoe. No matter how good you think it looks, people will still give you fit for it, both in person and online. Um, it's something that you're going to have to deal with. Uh, you could totally not deal with it by just taking the zip tie off. But hey, if you think it looks good, then, uh, then you're a boy, let's be honest. Just kidding. Inside the shoe, the sock liner is covered in this very wide white mesh. The insole of the sneaker is also white with the off-white the 10 logo printed on the heel. As for sizing, this is where the shoe gets a little frustrating. By that I mean if you are a half-size sneaker wearer, you're out of luck. Because like the regular Presto, the off-white Presto only comes in whole sizes. I'm lucky enough to be a whole size, and so this shoe fits me perfectly when I grab the right size. If you are, however, a half size, that's where it gets a little bit tricky. Usually what I'd say is that if you want a more snug fit, go down half a size. If you want a more wide or larger fit, go up half a size. You should be fine going either way. But because the shoe is so difficult to get, I'd say get whichever size is cheapest. I've tried on off-white Prestos that are a whole size up. And it's serviceable, it's doable, it's not like the most ideal situation, but it's not like an awful thing. However, if you are able to grab your true size, the shoe does run true to size and it fits incredibly well. It's an extremely, extremely comfortable sneaker. Seriously, this shoe is like stupid comfortable. I love the way it feels. Continuing back on the sneaker, on the lateral side, you've got your misplaced stitched on Nike swoosh. This swoosh comes in sort of a light tan or a cream and is covered by this ridged plastic. Some people weren't a huge fan of the color that they used on the swoosh and would have preferred something more like a black swoosh. I personally think it looks great. I have no problem with the way it looks. Stitched into the bottom of the swoosh, you've got this little floppy orange tab, which is on all of the off-white sneakers. Some people like to legit check off-white sneakers by checking the size of the tab. I don't think it really makes that big of a deal. I think they're all hand-cut. I 
could be wrong, but I think they all vary slightly, so it's not the best indicator of whether a shoe is real or not. I'd probably look more at the stitching around the swoosh and the overall shape of the shoe. Just behind that, you've got your semi-translucent milky white midfoot cage. On the medial side, you've also got a cage, except this time around it actually covers up the off-white Nike Paragraph branding. Not really a huge deal because no one really cares what it says, but I think it's a cool look overall. And also, I don't know how they would have printed the paragraph over top of the cage. Continuing back on the sneaker, you've got the Zelco strap over top of this TPU semi-translucent heel counter. Of course, you've got your signature off-white Nike branding on the lateral side. In this case, it says air in quotation marks because that's the technology that's used in the midsole. If you didn't already get what that was referencing, that's what it's referencing. Moving down on the sneaker, you've got your all-white Presto midsole. Again, this mid...